What's up, Photo Booth fam? It's Tiffany coming at you guys with another video. Today, we are going to talk about how to price out your photo booth services. I see a lot of questions about this in the Facebook groups, a lot of chatter. I get questions personally about it. And it's really important as a business owner, right? <laughs> to be able to price out your services appropriately. If you guys recall last video, if you didn't watch it, make sure you do. We got behind the screen, looked at my tracker spreadsheet to see how much money it was actually costing us to run our photo booth business. We looked at the whole year, 2023, how much things cost so we could really take a, a inventory of, you know, how much is this uh, booth costing us to run for every event or every month or however you pr uh, prefer to do it. And so from there, I think it's really good to be able to talk about what are some of the things other than that that I'm thinking about when I'm pricing out my photo booth services, when I'm getting inquiries from customers and they're asking me, you know, how much for this or how much for that, I'm able to come back and give them a legitimate answer. So before we hop into that though, make sure you guys like this video, make sure you subscribe, make sure you click that notification bell so you know when I come with the heat. And I think that's the list. All right, so let's get into this. All right, so first things first, when you are looking to price out your photo booth services, the place I would start would be doing some market research as we call, uh, <laughs> we call it in the federal government before we're, we're thinking about doing any type of contract, solicitation of services, goods and services, we do a little bit of market research. Uh, and that is gonna be compliments of our friends at Google. All you need to do is go online, Google search photo booth services and whatever city or town that you stay in, go type that in, pull up and get a, just a feel for your competition, right? You want to know how much are people charging out there? What, you know, what kind of services are people offering? So is it that they only have, you know, digital booths or they only have like the standard DSLR booth? Are there a lot of 360 photo booth booths out there? You know, look at folks' Google profiles, see, you know, do they have a lot of strong uh, recommendations or a good, um, not recommendations, excuse me, a lot of good reviews. Go to their website, look what their website looks like. You know, is it, does it look like a, an appealing website that would draw customers? Does it look like they're taking this business seriously? Go to their then pricing sheet. Look at how much they're charging based on what the services are that they are offering. See what kind of add-ons they have. There, I know for me personally, some of the areas that I've gotten outbid from other um, companies has been either they were super cheap, which I was like, okay, I'm not willing to, you know, negotiate down that low, or they were offering other services that I didn't have access to. Right? I had someone come back and say, hey, well, well, actually, a few people. Well, hey, we want to hire a DJ that's also going to do a photo booth. Now, my argument is always, if you want the best of the best when it comes to photo booths, you're gonna want a photo booth company rather than a DJ who just does this on the side. Sorry, DJs. But that's just my personal opinion, right? I spent all of my time learning the photo booth. I don't have to split it between DJ and, and photo booth because the DJ is its own thing altogether, right? Like That's a very time consuming skill to learn and to master and keep it up. So if you're wanting the best of the best services when it comes to photo booths, you're gonna want a photo booth company. So. Being able to get that market research, writing down, and I would don't just do this for one company, right? Market research requires you to go out and get a lot of data, collect information, learn from that information. Because then you're able to evaluate how many companies are there in my area, how many quality companies are there in my area, and what does it look like the running cost is for the you know type of photo booth services that I want to start. So say for instance you're doing 360. You know, before we got started, I literally went on Google, looked at some Google profiles just to kind of get a feel for, you know, how many people are out there. At the time, there wasn't a ton of strong Google profiles that I felt like it was like insurmountable for us to start and start ranking on Google, right? So you definitely want to do that because I see this all the time. People in Facebook groups complaining like, oh, it's too many people in my area. It's saturated. It's a race to the bottom, blah, blah, blah. Clearly they didn't do the market research, right? They didn't look into this before they got started, which I think is very important. Before you do any kind of business is to know what your competition is. Know, you know, is there a market for it in wherever you're living? Because you could live in a place, I mean, it, I, it's probably rare, but you, maybe you live in a place that people don't know about 360 boosts, or maybe there isn't a real demand for it. But 
you don't know that until you go online and do a little bit of market research. So you might find that, hey, there's not a ton of companies out there, or you might find the opposite. There are a ton of companies out there. And if there are, then you, it, it doesn't mean you can't start your business, right? It just means that you want to be thoughtful and intentional about the next thing, which is your value add. So I think every business should think about, you know, before they're getting started or even while they're functioning, what is it that sets me apart from every other business? What is it that I want to stand out in? Is it my customer service? Is it my video quality? Uh, is it my, you know, all of my add-ons? Maybe I do balloons. Maybe I do backdrops. Maybe I do flower walls. Maybe I do the marquee lights. Maybe uh, my value add is I'm, you know, the cheapest around. I wouldn't go for it, but hey, there's some people that do. <laughs> um, so thinking about what it is that's going to make your business stand out and set apart from the rest so that when you are talking to customers, you can explain why they want to select you versus someone else. For us, we are really big on customer service. Whenever I, you know, get a customer, I want that customer to come back again. I want that customer to refer me to other people. I want that customer to leave me an awesome review. So I try to provide quality services at reasonable cost with great customer service so that I leave an impression on every customer that I meet. On top of that, we use Snappic, which in my opinion is one of the best softwares out there when it comes to getting real creative with your production. To me, that does set us apart because most productions I see don't get really creative. They're just kind of standard boomerang, you know, go around 15 seconds, come back around again. And I mean, it's clean, it, it looks nice, but to me, the production in Snappic kind of sets you apart, right? I'm willing to pay that little bit of extra to be set apart. So I really had to sit down and think about what is it that I want my business to be known for? Because then again, like I said, when you're marketing to your customers, you're able to explain to them why they're going to select you because there is always going to be competition, right? Like in any business, there will be competition and you have to be able to articulate what is the value add based on your pricing, right? Because you could say, Hey, I'm going to charge a hundred dollars an hour. I'm no shade to anybody who does that. I'm not even going to say anything funny about it. But you could say you charge $100 an hour. Your value add is you're not going to find anybody cheaper in my town than I am. Or you could say I'm going to charge $350 an hour. And this is why. You have to be able to articulate that. And again, when you have that comparison of what other people are doing in your market, you're able to say, hey, well, nobody else in my town has this flower wall. And I'm, you know, I mean, I'm adding that into your package. And that's why the package is 350. Nobody else is using, you know, has this type of production. Nobody else video quality looks like this or, you know, whatever it is that might be for your business. I think it's really important that you know that and be consistent with that and be able to articulate that. Uh, and then the last thing I would say would be what we went over, kind of similar to what we went over last week, right? Knowing how much it costs to run your business is really important because again, if you are charging $100 an hour and it costs you $200 an event to show up, what, what are we doing? Like you're losing money. So I think doing that evaluation, starting what we did last week, look at how much it costs you to run uh, your events per week or per event or per month, or like I said, however you want to do that calculation, being able to track that, or if you don't have your business started, being able to project that into the future based on the things that you're going to be, you know, providing. And then don't forget to add in your cost of labor. That is really important because just because it costs you maybe $200 an event and you made for it, you know, you charge $400. Well, that margin is $200, right? And if you spent I don't know, maybe an hour getting there, an hour leaving, an hour to set up. You might have to pay other people. I mean, you like three, four hours in already without even counting a two hour event. So I think it's really important to calculate that as well. I think sometimes I probably have shorted myself on it and is why in 2024 I said, I think I need to raise my prices a little bit. So, uh, so yeah, so make sure when you're doing that cost evaluation of what the business calls you, you're not only counting the cost of all of your equipment, but you're also counting the cost of your labor. Because again, when you break it down on that, when I really sat down and thought about it, when I had people who wanted to debate me on my price, and I've had a few people who wanted to go back and forth, and I'm like, listen, 
like I said earlier, it cost me at least an hour for me to talk with you as the customer, go back and forth about your overlay, confirm locations, get your colors, like all of that back and forth, send your contract. That's at least an hour. Driving to you, usually with traffic in the DMV area, most places are gonna be 30 to 45 minutes, sometimes upwards of an hour. Coming back is an hour. Your event is two hours. That, so I'm at five hours already. Not to mention my partner who's also having a drive and we have to split the proceeds. So it's like some events, I'm sorry, it's not, it's not worth me coming to you anymore. So I think it's really important to do that evaluation as well. So just to summarize it all, we're gonna start with our market research. From there, we're gonna compare our value add with what other people are providing in the area and determine what's gonna set me apart. And then third, I'm gonna count the cost of my business and my labor. By the time you have all of these three things done, you should be able to more confidently decide what your pricing is gonna be. And again, if you end up at the bottom or at the top after you've done these three things and you still feel confident about your pricing, it is what it is, right? You could be at, you know, if you're the top, then you better be providing the best of the best. And if, at, if you're at the bottom, I don't really expect much. <laughs> and I don't, I don't know if your customers will either, but hey, there's a market for it, right? Um, so I hope that was valuable. I hope that was helpful. Again, I, you know, when I get the, the questions like, what should I charge for blah, 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 I'm always like, I can't count the cost for you as a business owner. It's your business. I can only count the cost for my business. For us, we're getting ready to add another photo booth. I'm getting a DSLR booth. And so again, I'm gonna have to kind of go through that process of determining how much am I gonna cost? We're gonna be having printing services, which is a little bit different. And so I'm gonna be going through this process with you guys, right? So again, don't feel bad, don't feel overwhelmed. It's just, it's part of any business that you do. You always have to figure out what are your pricing is gonna be. And ultimately that goes into what are your goals? And oh, I, I almost forgot, the, the market that you're going after, right? That's really important in this. I, 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 I can't believe I almost forgot that part. If you're looking to do weddings versus if you're looking to do corporate events versus if you're just looking to do backyard birthday parties, you know, I think that definitely plays into it because the corporate space, you're going to definitely find people who are willing to pay more, but they're also going to have higher expectations of you. The backyard birthday parties, I'll be honest. I mean, we did plenty of those and it, you're not going to get the best of the best. You're generally going to get what's the cheapest price I can get. I don't care what the videos look like, you know, I, I don't care about any of the props. I just want to have a little bit of fun and watch the arms spin around and laugh. Uh, so definitely consider that when you're doing that market research and you're looking at the pricing and you're looking at your value add, think about what is going to be your target market. And we talked about that when we were talking about doing a business plan and determining where, you know, kind of what you want to do with the business. That part does tie into it. Thank God he, he dropped that in, in my mind. I almost forgot. So with that, y'all, I'm going to stop talking because it's way over my time. And yeah, make sure you guys get down in the comments. Leave me any thoughts, suggestions, ideas, things that maybe you consider that I didn't mention when you're setting your prices. And I hope to catch y'all on the next video. All right. Peace.